After killing the Alpha King Titan on Extinction, I am now in the Genesis Simulation and I have to kill the Alpha Master Controller within 200 days. Day 1 I spawned in and HLNA was already making me want to jump off a cliff. But besides that, I had all my stuff from my Extinction 100 Days videos. So now that I have all this free stuff, just kidding, I threw it all on the ground, don't worry, I don't cheat that much. Anyway, I had chosen the bog to spawn in because it's the easiest out of the five biomes. But just letting you all know, none of the biomes are easy and you will see examples of this very soon. Anyways, after crafting my first pickaxe, hatchet, and bow and arrow, I teleported myself to the bog northeast because it was right next to dodo basketball, which is exactly what it sounds like. You throw dodos into a basketball hoop. It's amazing. And it's probably the easiest of all the missions in Genesis, so that's why you get next to nothing when you complete it. And it's so easy I did it on Gamma, then went straight to Alpha difficulty and beat it with plenty of time to spare. But the reason I even bothered to do Dodo Basketball is because it gives you a few hexagons that can be used to buy resources from HLNA that are difficult to get when you're first starting out like Hyde. So after only 10 minutes of playing, I had some pretty decent gear. And after that, I proceeded to get attacked by a Capro, but since I'm the best arc player to ever live and I have over 500 health, I managed to kill it. Moving on, I got a campfire going for some quick food before exploring and finding a little plateau with some metal that'll make my temporary home because being on the floor of the bog is basically instant death. And as day one came to a close, I placed a forge, mortar and pestle, and smithy and got my first metal tools. I began day two by farming narco berries, metal, and crafting a crossbow because I wanted to tame a frog. These little buffaloes are pretty easy to tame. They have a cheap saddle, are pretty decent to travel on, and they are everywhere in the bog, so it was the obvious choice. And after farming up a stone trap, I found a level 162 not far from my base and made him mine. His name is Kermit and we're gonna conquer the world together. And after Kermit tamed, I was leading him back to my base when I was picked up by a Capro without consent. I had to kill him for his crimes. Later on, I now had a full set of flak armor and Kermit had a saddle and I forgot how fun these frogs are to bounce around on. And I then made two more forges to speed up metal production and I kept getting attacked by insect swarms. These things are so annoying and I'm gonna have major beef with them later. And after killing another rogue insect swarm, I tamed a raptor in honor of the raptor man himself, Rampy. Moving on, a thought occurred to me. What's better than Obizo Bufo? A giga. But I won't be able to tame one of those for a while, so I decided I wanted a female frog so that they could breed and I could have an imprinted frog. And that's exactly what I did. I knocked out and tamed the level 156 Bezo Bufo and they had weird froggy sex under the water. Day 3 started with a tragedy. I threw out the egg I got from the two frogs too high above the water and it poofed out of existence. So after carrying out the fastest abortion of all time, I decided to play some dodo basketball to ease my pain. Later on, I decided I was done getting poverty hexagon amounts doing alpha missions. So I decided to do Wave Race 64. It's basically just Walmart, Mario Kart, and Ark, but I did manage to do all of three difficulties. And I got a decent amount of hexagons and a really good hazmat helmet. And later in the day, I did some more metal farming and bred my frogs once again for a baby that would actually hatch this time. Hold up, with me doing all this boring work in the early game, I need a break. Something fun, like Watcher of Realms. Watcher of Realms is the next-gen fantasy RPG that you need to play. Watcher of Realms puts all other RPG games to shame with its insanely high-quality audio, visual effects, and its immersive gameplay. Play. And there are over a hundred unique heroes that you can unlock that'll help you win battles all while looking like it belongs on a top tier gaming PC. And along with all the hundreds of heroes, Watcher Realms features a wide variety of chapters, maps, and levels. And each hero has their own unique backstory that is left for you to discover. And make sure to check out the game mode called Tide, where hundreds of monsters will attack your position and you'll have to deploy your heroes to defend yourself. Watcher of Realms takes you to the continent of Tia that contains many dungeons, mountains, and deserts for you to strategically make your way through all while being user friendly. And defeating bosses in Tia will grant many many rewards. And speaking of defeating bosses, you can team up with guild partners and challenge the epic dragon to rush to the top of the guild rankings. But Watcher of Realms isn't just your average RPG with good graphics. Watcher of Realms makes RPG for fun again with professionally new content. And Watcher of Realms is a game that was just newly launched. And to celebrate their new launch, Watcher of Realms is hosting a team competition with two influencers. You can choose either one of these two influencers team to win a competition and get real life rewards like iPhones and Xbox, Switch, and other in-game rewards. So download Watcher of Realms today using the link in the description or the QR code on screen right now and participate in the competitions today. And three minutes later, this little bundle of joy was brought into the world. I named him Squishy and he was going to be my best friend until he got eaten by Baryonyx, not even five minutes later. I guess I'm just not meant to have an imprinted frog. So I returned to my base at the end of the day, sad and depressed. Oh, and I tamed a Parasaur in the time between Squishy's birth and death, but he wasn't that important. Day four and I was tired of the bog. It's sad and depressing with all this rain and fog. And with all the death, 
death and destruction surrounding me, I decided I wanted a protector, and a perfect protector would be a Rex, more specifically a max level tech Rex from the Lunar Biome. So after farming taming equipment for about a third of the day, I was off to the Lunar Biome for whatever awaits me there. Do not go to the Lunar Biome. Repeat, do not go to the Lunar Biome. I was freezing to death while being attacked by tech monsters, and it was basically hell in space. Anyways, I made it to safely teleport back to my base, but I somehow decided, hey, maybe if I have fur, I'll be able to survive and tame a tech Rex. And I decided to go back on foot this time, as the Bezo Buffo wasn't really doing that well in the low gravity. It was the worst decision of my life. I ended up on a tiny ledge with like 10 defense units trying to kill me with drones shooting me. But I somehow managed to teleport back to the bog, and yeah, I'm not going back to the lunar biome for a while. So instead, I decided to tame an X Rex in the volcano biome. I then crafted and placed a fabricator to make canteens, because there's basically no water in the volcano zone. However, I had to spend the rest of the day farming hexagon so I could buy obsidian to make polymer to make canteens since organic polymer is way too expensive to buy. Day 5 was a painful day. I found a max level X Rex being a level 180, and thinking this was going to be the easiest Rex team of my life, I set up my stone gateway trap before a rogue magma sword decided I no longer have the right to live. But since I'm a pro, I managed to avoid all the fireballs. And I even managed to get the Rex into the trap before the magma sword gave me a huge middle finger by directly hitting my trap, setting the Rex free. After that low blow from the magma sword, I made and placed another trap a little bit down the hill and managed to even trap the Rex in it. However, after only putting a few trank arrows into it, my chat quickly informed me that I wouldn't have enough arrows to knock it out. And yes, you heard that right, I streamed a large part of this 100 days on my YouTube channel, so make sure to subscribe so you can see me suffer live. Anyway, I teleported back to the bog and went through the mind-numbing process of crafting narcotics and turning them into trank arrows. And then, I was back in the volcano biome and the grand shooting montage began. Day 6 and the Rex was finally out. I'm pretty sure I put over 300 Trank Arrows into this Rex. And if you didn't know, X variants of dinos take less torpor and damage, so they're basically just normal dinos but on steroids. And the Rex actually took most of the day to tame because I only managed to get 2 prime meat, so the rest of the tame was on raw meat, which is super slow. You can't really kill many big dinos that drop prime meat on a frog. Anyway, the Rex finally tamed and I instantly put it to great use when I was attacked when I teleported back to the bog. And when I returned to my base, I crafted the Rex's saddle and repaired my armor before committing many murders against random dinos in my path. And to end off the day, I began making my way towards the King of Swing mission as I heard it was pretty fun and gave some decent points. Day 7, I started the game of King of Swing mission even though a random Bezel Buffo oh. tried to stop me. The King of Swing mission is pretty much the same as Wave Race 64 except this time you're just swinging around the bog on a Bloodstalker. And I completed the Gamma difficulty and it was really easy so I did the Beta difficulty and finished with only 2 seconds left. So yeah, you can picture how the Alpha difficulty went. Psych, I just did the alpha difficulty again and beat it because I am the king of swing. That was the corniest thing I've ever said. Moving on, I returned to my base and crafted three beds because all that swinging on a bloodstalker made me really want one of my own. So I made a syringe and began extracting my own blood, dying a few times into the process until I had around 100 blood packs. And after that, I crafted a few grapples and set off on Kermit to find a low level bloodstalker I could tame. After only about a minute into day 8, I found a level 18 that will be mine. It's a terrible level, but I don't feel like farming 100 of blood packs right now. And if you don't know how to tame bloodsuckers, you kind of just get close to them and they suck you. Anyway, I teleported straight into the ocean biome after I tamed my soccer because I was already tired of living in the bog and I wanted to find a new place to live. And after looking around for a little bit, I decided on the tallest ocean pillar in the ocean simply because it looks cool. And after taming a little monkey to be my shorter companion, I went back to the bog and began farming structures for my new base, such as foundations, a smithy, forges, and a fabricator. And after I cleared out the absurd amount of bushes that were on the area I wanted to build on, I placed all my structures. In the morning of day 9, I added some storage boxes to my base and then transferred all my loot from my old base to my new one. And after that, I've placed a few more general use structures before buying cryopods from HLNA and taming a few moss shops. You see, I wanted to tame a good breeding pair of bloodstalkers because I was already sick of my bad one. But for some reason, if you just tame the bloodstalker by yourself, you only get like 50% taming effectiveness, meaning you lose about 30 to 40 levels of potentially good stats. But if you sacrifice a few dinos like moss shops to them first, their taming effectiveness goes back up. I tamed a few more moss shops into day 10 until I had 6 total, and after that I had to spend the rest of the day extracting blood from myself so I could get over 400 blood bags so I could go tame 2 good blood stalkers and never have to do this again. It was torture for my in game character and me in real life. I finished farming blood packs in the morning of day 11, and I then was off into the bog and after that not too long I found a level 168 male blood stalker that would be perfect for me if I only knew what was to come. At first I couldn't figure out why the blood stalker wasn't grabbing the moss shops and it was only grabbing me, but after leaving render and coming back into it, it finally picked up 
the moss chops and killed it. But it only gained like 6% taming effectiveness from it. It's at, dude, that only got it at 57. Are you kidding? After that, I spent another 10 minutes trying to get the Bloodstalker to eat another moss chops and it actually went pretty smoothly this time. And so did the third moss chops, which was now up to 75% taming effectiveness. Day 12, and I just like to say this whole time I've been fighting off insect swarms. They were annoying, but they were manageable. But here is where they finally crossed the line. The Bloodstalker grabbed my fourth moss chops, but an insect swarm started attacking it, thus hitting the Bloodstalker, dropping the taming effectiveness. After that, I spent like 10 minutes just sitting there being angry before finally taming the Bloodstalker with only like 68 taming effectiveness because I couldn't be bothered to do it all over again. And I also tamed a level 156 female before returning to my base. And while I was at my base, I bred the bloodstalkers and hatched the grossest sounding egg ever. Ugh, what is that sound it makes? Anyway, the Bloodstalker hatched, and it had pretty good stats, and I named it Venom. And for the rest of the day, I just farmed a few resources around my base, because I couldn't go far, because I had to imprint the baby. Day 13, and I need a better way of farming resources. I was farming some oil rocks under my base, when my stream chat told me if I did the Gamma or Ruffle some feathers mission, I had a chance to get a mining drill. So being faced with either spending a bunch of resources I don't want to farm to craft a mining drill, or doing a mission for the loot, I'll definitely do the mission. Anyways, after leveling up my new Bloodstalker, so it wouldn't be complete but she, except I got into a fight, I cryopod in my rex and teleported into the snow biome. And when I first started the mission, I was a little bit confused about what I had to do, but I eventually figured out I had to follow these glowing tracks on the ground that led to a brute Uteranus. And this brute Ud could throw down, dude. It had a bunch of health and did a lot of damage. And after fighting it a few times and it running away because it's a bit I eventually caught up to it, killed it, and got my mining drill. And after that, I quickly went to the bog biome to farm what little metal my bloodstalker could carry. I'll definitely have to raise a weight stalker soon. Day 14, I returned to my base and got the metal smelting as well as hatched the weight stalker and named him Carnage. And after that, I did another metal run, finished raising Carnage, and then did one bigger metal run with him at the end of the day. And I'm gonna start pushing for an industrial forge now because running 10 forges at the same time isn't that fun. With me pushing for an industrial forge on day 15, I harvested the little crystal nodes on my pillar that actually gave a surprising amount of crystal. And after that, I went to the bog with Kermit to farm cementing paste from killing bugs. But it took about 10 minutes of me farming to realize I can buy cementing paste from the shop and it was actually pretty cheap, so yeah, screw this. But before I returned to the ocean, I farmed a little bit more metal. And now I had the issue of polymer. I needed 400 to craft a forge and I didn't want to spend another 800 cementing paste to craft a polymer and then need another 400 for the forge. However, to solve my problem, I remember that Karno spawned in the caves in the lunar biome, so I teleported over to the hellish place with my my bloodstalker and began searching and i spent the rest of day 15 there and in the morning of day 16 i only managed to kill two crabs i also saw my life flash before my eyes on day 16 when i nearly dove head first into a meteor what Whoa. And after that, I couldn't really find any more crabs, but it was alright because I got a little bit of polymer and I farmed a lot of oil in one of the lunar caves. Anyway, I decided to just bite the bullet and farm some obsidian in the volcano and turn it into hard polymer. And towards the end of day 16, I had my indie forge. But instead of farming a buttload of metal, to end off day 16, I started crafting narcotics. Day 17, I finished crafting narcotics and then proceeded to stare at the big thing in the sky for 20 minutes. Let me know if you know what this thing is in the comments. What I was really doing was eating. Anyways, after that, I finally put some of the narcotics to use when I knocked out a level 156 dodic in the volcano biome. It's about time I get some farming dinos. The mining trail is good and all, but nothing compared to dinos. Day 18 was a day alright. It was indeed a day. I had found a level 174 Ankleo, and I was in the process of tranking it out when the volcano erupted. That's super close! Well, that wasn't exactly ideal. I managed to get my stuff and my bloodsucker back, but the Ankleo was dead, and I quickly learned that the Dodic had died as well. But I guess the Genesis simulation felt bad for bullying me because I found a good level Dodic and Ankleo together in a safe area to tame them. But I had to go back and refarm all of those narcotics and trank errors again before I even thought about taming them. But when I returned, I trapped the Ankleo and made quite possibly one of the highest IQ plays ever to trap the Dodic. After that, I knocked out a Doet and Ankleo out before the volcano started to erupt, and let's just say I had a severe case of PTSD. Anyway, the rest of the day was spent waiting for the Doet and Ankleo to tame because they were both taming on Mayho berries, which take forever. Day 20, I was in the Arctic biome looking for a high level Therizino to tame. I needed it to farm wood for me, especially since these mining drills farm thatch rather than wood and farming wood by hand sucks butt. And it didn't take long for me to find a max level 180 Therizino. And after building a stone trap and it was unconscious, it was practically begging me to tame it. And so I did over the course of 30 minutes because taming dinos on mayhew berries alone sucks butt. 
It was actually day 21 when the fairy tamed, and I named it Tickle Chicken. Anyway, I returned to my ocean pillar and farmed a lot of wood with it. And I figured out if you have your mining drill in your hand, you can transfer the wood from the fairy's in its inventory to yours and reduce the wood weight drastically. You see, I really hate having all my dinos unorganized on different levels of land, so I wanted to build a giant platform to store all of my dinos. And I also farmed stone and then began to craft stone foundations to once again expand my base. Isn't this nice? I know it took like half an hour of farming and building, but it's just so visually appealing. Screw your nice house in other videos, give me a big flat platform and I'll be more than happy. Anyways, moving on, I did a metal run in the bog and volcano to keep my metal supply up. But if I want to keep crafting stuff that uses metal, I need polymer or cementing paste as well. But I now have a whopping 19 hexagons, so I can't buy any more cementing paste, so I decided to try and beat bog beatdown as my chat wanted me to do it, and it promised some decent hexagons. And if you don't know how this mission works, you're in an arena while waves of different bog creatures try and eliminate you but there are weapons on the ground you can pick up and fight back. Now another thing I should preface is that gamma, beta, and alpha difficulty of missions involving fighting are very different. In gamma missions you do 5 times damage, in beta missions you do normal damage, and in alpha you do 5 times less damage. So basically gamma is a piece of cake, beta is challenging but it can be done, and if you do alpha you will get dogged on. So that's why I was surprised when I got the actual life beaten out of me as soon as I started the beta bog beatdown. Gamma was so easy and I literally had to cancel the beta mission because I was about to die. Anyway, after that, I returned to my base with my 2500 hexagons I got from the Gamma one and repaired my armor. And after that, I just did some Ruffle Some Feathers missions again on Gamma because I had enough of the bog for that day. Day 24 was also nearly traumatizing because my Rex actually nearly died to Ruffle Some Feathers mission because the UD would push me out of the fight zone and teleport back in the middle with more health. And with me nearly failing the Gamma mission, I decided I had enough of this bad Rex. And I wanted to tame a breeding pair of Tech Rexes. So when I returned to my base, I started farming narcotics and Trank darts with a long neck I made, but if I'm gonna go to the lunar biome to tame some rexes, I'm gonna need medical brews to keep me alive in the scorching heat or freezing cold. But to make medical brews efficiently, I need an industrial cooker, which I actually had most of the resources for. So I made a quick trick to the volcano to farm obsidian for polymer, and I placed over a hundred vertical pipes from the water up to my base. But by the end of the day, the industrial cooker was up and running. In the morning of day 25, I placed an industrial grill for better food production. And after that, I spent the rest of the day doing a few things around the base while I had narcotics crafting. It takes about a hundred trank darts to knock out a max level tech rex, and I wanted two. So I need around 600 narcotics to make all the trank darts. Day 26, and it was go time. I farmed the rex traps in the morning, and by midday, I was in the lunar biome freezing my balls off, but it was for a good cause. And it didn't take long before I found the beauty of a tech rex being a level 201 female. I then placed the trap, got her in, and unleashed a hundred trank darts into her, and she was out like a light. But apparently she was out too cold because after I got back from the bog from farming prime meat to tame it, she was gone. Straight phased out of reality. Now that I had just wasted over 100 trank darts, I decided to spend around the first half of day 27 refarming all of them. But I did manage to knock out a level 208 male by the end of the day. Day 28, the rex tamed, and that's literally it because I tamed it on raw meat, and I was worried if I left it, the rex would disappear like the other one. I had to return to my base on day 29 to craft another rex trap, but after that I managed to successfully knock out a level 208 female tech. Rex, and it then proceeded to take the rest of day 29 and half of day 30 to tame because I also used raw meat to tame it. The rest of day 30 was spent back in the lunar biome killing tech dinos for oil and electronics. And after that, I placed my first generator cables and air conditioners before starting to incubate my first tech Rex egg. Day 31 and the tech Rex hatches twins, but their stats sucked, so I killed them. I know I could have kept them, but I'm trying to get perfect stats on my Rexes before I start using them to fight. After that, I crafted and placed a fridge and then hatched another Rex and killed it because it had bad stats as well. And after killing that infant, I did another metal run. And then another. Yeah, I don't really know what happened to my voice audio there, but as you can tell, the blood soccer did not teleport with me. So I dropped all my stuff in an item cache, died, spawned back in, got on my fighting blood stalker, and I had to drop a bunch of metal so I could get some back to base. And I then proceeded to swing all around the bog looking for my white blood stalker, but I legitimately could not find it. I knew he wasn't dead, but he was basically dead because I couldn't find him, so I accepted its fate and decided I would raise another weight stalker. Day 32, and I started raising said weight stalker, which I just named Weight. And it actually popped out. Out as twins, so I named another.
another one dude and i would never use him and i then hatched a baby rex listen if you want to be one of my rexes you better be born with good stats or you're getting the old one two three there's a dead baby rex in a tree which is exactly what i did when my weight blood stalker grew up so i could get some weight points into it and after that i hatched a rex that actually had the both good health and melee so it got to live i then made sure to get imprint on it before playing a round of alpha dota basketball for some easy points day 33 started out with me crafting a stone trap to tame a daydon i wanted a daydon to heal my rex so i could start doing missions with it and because i would probably need it to heal my future rex army and it didn't take me too long to find a level 156 in the bog and i quickly put it to sleep and tamed it and i named it your mom because your mom is a pig anyways after healing on my rex a little bit i hatched some more rex eggs which only one enough was good enough to live so after my rex has got some free levels i traveled to the arctic to do the ruffles and feathers mission which was a lot easier on an imprinted rex after force feeding my rex an absurd amount of raw meat to heal it i did the ruffles some feathers mission again and after acquiring some points and decent loot i returned to my base and hatched another their good rex so far both of my good rexes were female and i really wanted a male so i could have a perfect breeding pair day 35 started out with three motor runs in the bog which only filled up half the forge it's not the most efficient but it's all i can do right now and after that i lined up my rexes to breed and i finally got a good male with the good stats and for the rest of the day i started placing that shieldings under the main platform to place more air conditioners well, yeah, that was not a good start to day 36. I was trying to get the Rex down there so I could teleport to the bog to farm meat and levels, but that tree I couldn't see had other plans. But it's alright, luckily, because it wasn't the mail, so I set out what I already planned. After that, I returned to my base and demolished and placed new air conditioners in the new hatching area. I was already moving the hatching area so I could build a little cage around it. And if you're a channel regular, you already know why. But if you're not, on this channel, I like to kill babies for levels. It's cruel, but it's efficient. Day 37, I connected the air conditioners to power and place a few more and after that i farmed stone with my dodic and farmed wood with my third a mass craft railing so the baby rexes could not escape their fate and it took about a hundred railings but no baby rexes would be escaping from now on and the new hatching area worked great as i used it to hatch more baby rexes at the end of the day the first half of day 38 was spent raising the rexes before i took one of them to the bog to farm meat hide and levels i needed a lot of meat because you know, when you heal dinos with the data on it consumes meat like no one else and after killing the rexes again i had to return back to the bog because the Daydon is basically a professional eater and literally ate everything already. Day 39 and I was healing my Rexes because I wanted to attempt the Beta Rufflesome Feathers mission. I was basically becoming addicted to having hexagons and getting good loot. So after throwing out four of my Rexes at the mission terminal in the Arctic, we were off. And after only fighting the UD once and my Rex getting the half health, I decided, yeah, this... This isn't a good idea right now. So I sadly had to cancel the mission and return to my base empty-handed. But I hadn't had enough of missions yet. I decided to try the Gamma Hide and Seek in the ocean, where you basically just look for little blue points in different locations. I didn't finish the mission at the end of the day, but what's cool about this one, it has a good chance to drop good Rex Saddles. Five minutes into day 40, and I had completed the Gamma difficulty. And I got a Ramshackle Rex Saddle with 40 armor. It's not great by any means, but if I got this just off Gamma, imagine what I can get off Alpha. So after that, I did the beta and got a Mastercraft and journeyman saddle now this really got me excited because i bet i can get some ascended rex saddles from alpha so after dropping the loot off at my base because i was getting pretty heavy i returned and the alpha is exactly what i did but i didn't get any rex saddles i got a few good raptor and woolly rhino saddles but those are pretty useless anyway after that i ended off the day in the volcano farming a bunch of obsidian for polymer because i wanted to start setting my sights on a holy tech replicator just kidding i placed vaults on day 41 for better storage i mean i do actually want to craft a tech replicator soon but it's really expensive and it's going to be a pain to farm. Anyway, after organizing my gear into the new vaults, I went to the lunar biome because I wanted to tame a crab. I had crafted a simple Carquinos taming trap, and I had found a level 66 in the small lunar cave, and I wanted to tame a crab because they are overpowered for farming metal, obsidian, and crystal when given an Anki. But the crab is also really nice for farming element shards inside the volcano for when I eventually need a tech replicator. But I couldn't find a good way to place the trap in the cave. But someone in my stream chat then said I could craft a harpoon and then net the crab, and then place structures around it to trap it. And that sounds sounded pretty good to me, so I returned to my base, crafted a harpoon and three nets, and it worked perfectly. The crab was perfectly stuck between rocks and my metal pillars, and I managed to get a perfect angle on it and knock it out. And it didn't take long for it to tame, and I named it Crabulon from a suggestion in my chat. I had to travel into the bog for a second to farm fungal wood in the morning of day 43, but after that, I crafted the Carquinos to saddle. But now, my friends, it's time to really set my sights on crafting a tech replicator. I found out you can craft element in mission terminals, so I traveled into the volcano to farm a few black pearls and element 
diamond shards from these red crystals. No, but seriously, farming element is super easy on Genesis. You can literally walk in here with a pickaxe and get a bunch of elements. I farmed over just a hundred element to craft the tech replicator, and I began converting it into element one by one in a mission terminal. I say one by one because you have to individually click each time to craft one element. I was back in the volcano on the morning of day 44, farming more obsidian for polymer. You need around 600 polymer to craft the tech replicator, and it really sucks to farm. But after that, I slowly began transferring all my metal, polymer, and crystal to the terminal, and I can now craft the tech replicator. Turns out you need 800 polymer. So after spending a little more time crafting 200 more polymer, I finally had my tech replicator and boy did it look good. Day 45 and I had actually spent all of my metal to craft the tech replicator. So I had to start day 45 with another three metal runs. But after that, I decided I wanted a magma sword egg. Even if I never use it, they're just kind of cool to have. And after swinging around the inside of the volcano and being terrified for 10 minutes, I finally yolled it, dropped down, and scooped up a level 114 egg. It wasn't great, but it'll do. Day 46 and instead of hatching the magma sword egg, I decided to do a round of alpha hide and sink and it's good that i did because i got a really good mining drone and insane wreck saddle and after that i did all three difficulties of bottlenose blitz it's just racing underwater on an ichthy it's pretty easy but it's boring and for those of you who don't know to start the end bosses you need to complete a certain amount of missions for each difficulty and to start the gamma master controller fight i think you need to be just under 60 missions so that's why i do all three difficulties of missions if i can because eventually i'll have to do all of them anyways after that i started the gamma cheaper by the pack mission where you hunt a brute raptor in the bog but i crashed halfway through it but after i got back in the mission was super easy as all gamma missions are day 47 was pretty boring i just did the beta difficulty by the pack mission and then raised some baby rexes for the rest of the day day 48 i attempted the alpha cheaper by the pack but i was getting destroyed so i had to cancel the mission it's insane how big the difference in the difficulties are but it's now time to do some real element farming i took my anki bloodstalker and rex into the volcano and i obviously killed all the magma stores with my rex before i would run around on my anki farming all the element my blood soccer could hold and i also got a level 174 magma sword egg as well i returned to my base in the morning of day 49 and used my tech replicator to craft 270 elements and with me having my tech replicator and some element now i wanted to craft two tech generators and two teleporters i wanted the teleporters to make farming a lot easier see right now i can only farm as much as my blood soccer can hold because when you use hlna to teleport it teleports you in the middle of nowhere but with a teleporter i can teleport directly into my base being over capped with my crab and put all this stuff directly in the replicator or forge but before I did this, I wanted to expand my base again with ceilings and pillars, so I spent the rest of the day farming stone and wood for it. I finished expanding the base about halfway into day 51. And now that I have space for a tech generator and teleporter, I actually need the resources to craft them. And thus, I farmed a metric butt ton of obsidian and crystal in the volcano using my ankleo and crab for the rest of the day. The first 10 minutes of day 52 was spent getting obsidian and crystal from my ankleo to my base. I had to transfer over 10,000 pounds in weight, so this is why I really wanted a teleporter. But the grind didn't stop there. I returned back to the volcano to pick up some black pros real quick, and I then crafted two tech generators. And after crafting a little more polymer, I made my first teleporter which I placed. But with me crafting those three structures, I was basically out of resources again, so I did another metal run to end off the day. Day 53, I was back in the volcano once again farming around 300 elements. And after that, I returned to my base, prepared my flak, and crafted more polymer, and then began crafting stone foundations for the second teleporter to sit on. Day 54, and I had the second teleporter, tech generator, and foundations. And I had decided to put the teleporter right next to the volcano spawn east zone. So after clearing out some rocks and placing their foundations, the teleporter was up and and functional. This was going to make farming super easy. Wherever I was on the map, I could teleport to Volcano East and walk onto the teleporter. And moving on, I want to make a chemistry bench to speed up narcotic crafting. I was burning through my med brews when I would kill magma swords in the volcano, so I wanted more. But to craft that, I need more electronics, so I made my way to the lunar biome and massacred some tech dinos for a little bit. And just like that, I had my chemistry bench and medical brew production was good once again. Day 55 and guess what? I was back in the volcano farming a ton of element and obsidian. This time I brought my crab, making it's super easy to get around and I could farm all the element and obsidian my heart desires. And off that one trip alone, I managed to get over 450 element. And now that my element farming excursion went so well, I wanted to try the same thing with metal farming. But as soon as I threw out my ankleo in the volcano, a magma sword began attacking it and killed it. So yeah, it looks like I'm gonna need to raise my own magma sword pretty soon. And before I went back to my base, I made a quick trick to the lunar biome to farm ambergris so I could actually raise a baby magma sword. I also had to craft a ton more air conditioners so the magma sword egg could actually incubate. 
Day 56, I did a quick meta run before it hit me. I had to start doing more Genesis missions soon, or I won't be able to start the Gamma boss fight at the end of these 100 days. So I did the Gamma along King the Pollen mission, which was actually pretty tough. But after that, I did the three variants of bog fishing. And I actually failed a few of them because I didn't know how fishing nets work. Even with my over 5,000 hours in Ark, there's still a ton of mechanics I know little to nothing about. I finished bog fishing about halfway through day 57. And after that, I did the Beta Dodo basketball game because apparently I went straight from Gamma to Alpha the last time I did it. And even after that, I did the Gamma Hop, Skip, and Jump Away mission. And this one, you just follow a frog through the bog to its home while defending it from dinos trying to kill it. Day 58, I even managed to do the mission on Beta. And after that, I did the Spy vs. Spino mission on Gamma where you just hunt down a brute Spino. And I didn't even attempt it on Beta considering how the Ruffles and Feathers mission went. I started out Day 59 doing the Swamp Placid mission, which is just hunting down a brute Sarko. And I then quickly moved on to the Web Search, which was hunting down and killing a brute Bloodstalker. And it was all going fine, business as usual, until it pulled me off my Rex and nearly killed me. Yeah, after that traumatic experience, I had enough of hunting missions for right now. Day 60, I did all three difficulties of Bog Rally and another Bog Hunt. In Bog Rally, it's just racing on a Capro. And in a Bog Hunt, it's the Bog's version of Hide and Sink, where you just have to get those little blue points. Now, I know this is a lot of missions, but you have to do these missions to fight bosses. Missions on Genesis are pretty much just a way of life. Day 61, and if I have to do all the missions on the map, I'm gonna need some underwater dinos to do underwater missions. I really want some Tussos because I'll have to fight the motor and do hunting missions, but to tame a Tuso, you need a dino to sacrifice to it, and I decided an Itchy would be perfect as it's fast and easy to tame. And it took me like 20 minutes to find and tame a level 156 Itchy because I just couldn't find any at first. But after returning to base and crafting it a saddle, I spent the rest of the day looking for a good Tuso, but didn't find any. I decided to start doing some Arctic missions on day 62. First, I did Built Fjord Tough, which is the Arctic's versions of Bog Beatdown. And at first, I was struggling, but then I picked up this weird cluster grenade launcher and I annihilated literally everything. After that, I did Dearly Departed, which is where you hunt down and kill a brute Megaloceros. It's really easy. I then did Hide and Sink with a Y. In this one, you hunt down a brute Ferox. Pretty boring. But after that, I did Home is Where the Pouch is. It's like the hop, skip, and jump away in Mission and Bog, but this time it's with a baby Procoptodon, and sometimes it can actually be a challenge. And I managed to successfully complete Gamma by the end of the day. Day 64, I tried Beta Home is Where the Pouch is, and it didn't go so well. The baby died super close to the end, and I was pretty mad, so I just did some Mammoth on Parade, which is where you hunt down a brute Mammoth. The art devs really got creative when making these missions. And I ended off day 64 looking for a Tuso again, but didn't find any. Day 65, I finally hatched the baby Magmasaur. I then started reorganizing my Rexes because they were getting in the way. And I had to stay around my base because the Magmasaur only got 33% each time. So I hatched a few more Rexes that I'll eventually use in the boss. Day 66, all the babies were growing up and the Rexes were organized. I wanted to get back on the mission track, starting with me doing ice fishing. But as soon as I landed at the frozen lake, this happened. So yeah, I did Gamma ice fishing while crying. Day 67, I was in the volcano with my brand new magma sword. And it was actually insane at farming metal. And after that, I bred my Rexes and hatched the baby so my magma sword could get some more weight levels. Once again, it's cruel but efficient. And I ended off day 67 with a meat run in the bog. Day 68, I was doing the Mound Over Matter mission. In this one, you have to follow a path where there's a bunch of burrows and you search the burrows for two golden nuggets. Once you get the nuggets, you have to race back up to the terminal while an unholy amount of dinos try and kill you. And I know this from experience because me and my Rex barely finished and it nearly died. Day 69, I did all three difficulties of Saber Tooth Salomon. I definitely did say that right, but it's fine because I beat the mission just fine. And to end off day 69, I did some searching in the Frozone mission, which is another one of those variant missions where you have to find the blue points. Day 70, I did all three variants of Rhino 500. And later on in the day, I took a Rex into the Lunar Biome to do the Hunting by Moonlight mission. In this mission, you hunt down a Brute Giga, which is actually really hard to kill. But the reason I wanted to do this mission is because it drops decent tech rifles. And I need the tech rifles to shoot the Master Controller when he becomes available to damage. The mission was going fine until I got to the last stand with the Giga. It spawned in two Rexes to help it, and the three of them were on this tiny piece of rock that whenever me and my Rex got on it, we would just get pushed off by the Rexes. So after so long, I just gave up and canceled the mission. And after that, I looked through the ocean real quick for a Tuso, but to no avail. And after that, I decided to go on a metal run and throw up my Magma Sword with Cryo Sickness. It didn't take too long to wake up, however, and I managed to farm some decent metal by the end of the day. I got the metal smelting in the forge on day 72, and I then checked the ocean again and found the level 120 Tuso. It wasn't great, but I was tired of not having one, so I decided to tame it. And after that, I returned to my base and crafted a saddle, as well as placed an ocean platform at the bottom of my pillar to house the Tuso. And when I was taking my Tuso on a leveling spree, this guy decided to show up. And I decided to tame it since I still had some black pearls laying around. But when I returned with my frog to tame it, I couldn't find it anywhere. And day 73 topped it off when I crashed. But I guess Ark decided to reward me because when I loaded back in, I found the level 180 after 10 minutes of searching for the level 168. I'm assuming I loaded back in before the level 168 spawned in, so instead the level 180 spawned. It took about another 10 minutes of struggling to tame it because it was half in the mesh, but it was worth it. Day 74, I did the chasing the white whale mission where you hunt down 
a white whale. It was easy, but took the whole day because I was pretty bad at controlling the squid, so I kept missing the tracks I had to hit. Day 75, I did the locked and loaded to kill a brute plesiosaur. And I also did the Moza proposal mission where you kill a brute Moza. Man, I'm getting really tired of these hunting missions. But anyways, I pushed through and did the aloe and goodbye mission in the volcano biome. Day 77, and I tamed a lystro. I tamed this little dude to give my dinos double XP when they kill baby rexes to hopefully get more levels, and it worked perfectly. But to end off the day, I started teleporting to the lunar biome once again to try the hunting by moonlight mission because I really need these tech rifles, dude. This time, it was going a lot better. The tracks for the last stand led to a bigger piece of rock where this time I could throw out a second rex to help me for this epic fight. So yeah, I guess I'm just really good at getting hit by debris. Anyway, I managed to get back to Lunar and get my stuff. But I was gonna bounce back because going into the end of day 78, I was gonna do the Hunting by Moonlight mission again. But this time, instead of dying to natural causes, I was actually getting dogged on and one of my Rexes died before I canceled the mission. I don't know how I'm gonna do Beta or Alpha if I can't even beat Gamma, but I have a plan. I had some more baby Rexes out, only level to 22k health and then all melee. The Giga does bleed damage, so this lower health should benefit them. But I did have to spend the rest of the day raising the Rexes. The entirety of day 80 was spent leveling up the rexes and healing them and i'm not gonna lie their melee was kind of getting insane day 81 was pretty boring i did a few meat runs to keep the data on fed to keep healing my rexes and i did a round of hide and seek to get more good rex saddles but day 82 today is the day i will finally take down the brew giga and get my tech rifles Well, now that I finally have my tech rifles, I need element as ammo. I have enough right now, but I don't want to be left with zero element in 200 days. So I decided I need to tame another Ankylio, but first I have to farm narcotics. Day 83 and the Ankylio was knocked out, but we all know how taming it goes. Day 84 started with me taking out some baby Rexes on my new Ankylio for levels. And one baby actually managed to escape and get off the pillar. And that'd be the last time I'd ever see that baby again. Onyx. I'm trying to record a voiceover. And after that, I went down to the volcano with my newly leveled Anglio and got me some more element. I started repairing some of my gear in the morning of day 85 because it takes a really big beating when finding Magnosaurs. And I'd also like to mention I have a full set of Mastercraft flak from doing missions. And I also crafted two tech canteens. I don't know when, but I did and they're really cheap. And the rest of the day was spent doing the hide and sink mission for more Rex saddles. I wanted all of my Rexes to have decent saddles for the boss fight, so I need to do this mission a few more times in the future as well. After leveling one of my Rexes on day 86, I crafted myself a 2x2 stone trap. Now you guys might be asking, Grant, why are you taming something this late in the video? If if you don't have every dino you need for the boss fight by now, you suck. Yes, yes, I know, I'm gonna tame a Udyrens for the boss fight, but not for me to ride. You see, if you've never done the Master Controller fight before, let me educate you. In the Master Controller fight, there are corrupted avatars and dinotars that spawn in that you need to kill. And when killed, they drop code keys, which you have to pick up on foot and then put them into the code breaker, which either moves you to the next level or makes the Master Controller able to take damage. And since there's only one of me, I have to be on foot while my Rexes and Udys run around killing the avatars and dinotars while I pick up the code keys. But luckily, the Udy comes with a feature where I can still courage war when it's not mounted. So yeah, all of that just to explain why I'm taming a UD. Anyway, I went back to the arctic biome and found a really good ex UD I wanted to tame, but I couldn't get it in the trap because it would just aggro on a random dino and then wander off after killing it. I finally realized I wasn't going to be able to trap the UD on day 87, so I made another trap and found another good level UD nearby. It was a pain to trap, and I had a few fails, but I managed to get in the trap and start knocking it out. I say start knocking it out because I ran out of trank darts midway through the tame and had to return to base to make more, but it's all good because it was asleep by the end of the day. Day 88, the UD was mined, and you guys can guess what happens next. I killed babies with it. And I also had a Mastercraft saddle for the UD that I'm pretty sure I got in my first game of Dodo Basketball from the beginning of the video. Anyways, after that, I finished the remaining time of the day off by starting another hide and sink mission because I need those good Rex saddles. And day 89 and 90 were also spent doing the mission, but now I have all the Rex saddles I need. Every single one of my boss Rexes has a decent to good saddle with some of them being an ascendant saddle with over 100 armor. If these saddles aren't good enough, I don't know what is. Day 91. I'm eating a cheeseburger. This cheeseburger sucks. Day 92 was filled with missions, with me doing all difficulties of the gotta go fast and dead heat missions in the volcano. Day 93, I did the Gamma Hunting by Moonlight mission again, in hopes of getting some better tech rifles, but I didn't get any amazing ones. And after that, I did a thick meat run to heal my Rexes and my UD with my Day Dawn. And I'm pretty much ready for the boss now. I have all my dinos ready to go, and I have all the gear I really need. Which is why Day 94 through 98, I just AFK'd. I didn't really want to do anything else, because I wanted to leave enough stuff to do in the 200 days. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, 
guys I don't make too many 200 days for a lot of my videos because there simply isn't enough to do and I don't really want to be able to beat the boss by day 150 because what do I do for the other 50 days? Well, it's day 99. I have all my Rexes and my UD in the bog right next to the base where this all started. Here is where my journey started, and here is where it may end. I'm only doing the Gamma Master Controller fight, but this is one of the hardest boss fights in the game. But that doesn't matter. If I win, I'll emerge victorious on day 100. That's one ugly looking dude. <laughs> you don't get to watch the cutscene until I fight the alpha boss in 200 days.